This is uh, late September in Bergen at the Hotel Terminus. We are at the Pestalozzi conference where we talk about information literacy and it is arranged by the Pestalozzi seminar, CU and Bergen University College Center of Educational Research and uh, by Dr. Carla Flones. And we are very honored to have uh, Professor Paul Karp with us. Uh, he has been working all over the world, building schools in the area of war, Somalia and Sarajevo. He's working worldwide, to, has been working worldwide, and is working worldwide with problems on sustainable future. He's a professor of education at St. Mary's, and he's the founding father of uh, Incredible Edible Project, which we are going to talk a little bit now. Uh, Working at also working with uh, different committees of the United Nations, amongst them the Sustainable Future Committee. We're honoured to have you here. Thank you. It's, Mr. Good, Clark. it's a great pleasure. <laughs> Incredible edible. What is it? Well, it's a simple idea that we can we can begin the, to create the conditions for sustainable community through the focus of our people on food. It's as simple as that. And by beginning our focus on with food, we then link together three plates if you like. There's a business plate, there's a community plate, and there's a, a learning plate. And we're trying to spin all of those three plates. And when they spin together, incredible things happen. And it all happens around food in our town. And that's our starting point. And then from that, who knows? But we're beginning that interesting journey and giving people a sense of hope and possibility that they can act upon this massive challenge that we face with some um, degree of interest and passion and excitement and that's it how does incredible edible reinvent a community i think the simplest thing that we do is we bring people together to talk to each other about possibilities of what they can do in their environment so it gives them a sense of self-reliance and empowerment and um, the process of bringing people together to create solutions is incredibly empowering and positive um, it, it generates a mood of optimism and uh, a sort of can-do attitude. Um, and that, that's a very important thing in an environment like ours in Todmorden where we've lost a major industry over the last 20 years, which is cotton. Uh, we're not going to have anything like that scale of industry again, probably, in our town. So what we have to begin to look at are the ways in which simple micro solutions begin to build the resilience in the community again and the sense of pride in the community and the project has I think achieved that very quickly because people are now talking about this project in lots of places we're getting visitors to Todmorden who want to look at vegetables it's extraordinary but it's exciting because it brings in new commerce and new, new interests and it gives people a sense of possibility for the next steps and the next future. What are the challenges of a new literacy? Well, I think that what we need to start to draw attention to is that the planet as a, as a whole is facing some serious challenges ecologically in terms of uh, water depletion, problems with population growth, problems with energy solutions that we need to think hard about, and problems really with the basic biodiversity, um, the number of creatures that live on the planet are under great threat as a consequence of human activity. And so what I think personally we need to be working on with young people and, and our communities is a way of thinking about our education that brings the global picture into the classrooms and the communities that we live in and gets us to think about our own place and look again at the ways in which we live in our own places and become make, make those more sustainable environments. And that means really rethinking a lot of the ways in which we currently live. And that's a major challenge because we have to, in a sense, um, unhook ourselves from the addiction of consumerism. And that, I think, is probably one of the key things in terms of a new literacy that we have to think about. So rather than educate our young people to participate in a world where it's business as usual, we need to think about the ways in which we provide a literate, ecologically literate uh, curriculum for students that enables them to really participate as, as contributing thinkers to the new future, which is looking more towards a relationship that's much more symbiotic 
with the natural environment, much more part of nature rather than apart from it. Um, in Incredible Edible operates as both a local logic and perhaps a way of thinking about solutions in other places. We don't look at Incredible Edible as the solution. We're interested in exploring it in our context because it suits the type of environment that we have in Todmorden. Um, but there are transferable pieces of the, of the story of Incredible Edible which perhaps explore could be explored in other places, in other parts of the world. And, and that, in a sense, is part of what I was saying in the talk about the, the need, perhaps, to rethink the idea in a, in a new environment, a postmodern environment, uh, or a post-industrial environment, for a different type of narrative about the future, a different story to the one that we've grown up with over the last two centuries, which is that we create lots of products and we make lots of money out of those products and our economy in a sense is built around creating those things and selling them and continually doing that and using resources that are in many cases not renewable resources so where we go next i think in this narrative or where we begin with this narrative is start to think about the ways that we can construct small scale solutions in our own environments with practical, solid examples that people can see. Because once people begin to witness these things, they realise that this is possible. If it's simply a question of reducing the climate emissions, mm. that's a harder thing to do. In, you, can, you can do certain obvious personal things about that, but it's also very, very big as a problem. Mm. By, by simplifying it in our project in Incredible Edible, we focused on food. We used food as a starting point to think about um, the, the, the place that we live in. What type of environment do we really want to create? What community relationships are the most useful in times of change? And those are obviously things about um, strong relationships with each other, support, trust, which then in turn provide people with the space to innovate and think about possibilities rather than feel threatened and not take risks. So I think it's, it's, it's mainly, in our case, a small story about how to build the conditions in a little town that are important conditions to begin a journey about sustainable living. Going from landscape to mindscape is um, really a, a simple way of describing how we look at our environment differently. And my feeling is that you can go around a town, you could go around Bergen, you could go around Todmorden, London, and you experience um, the very obvious physical presence of human beings. But you could equally go around that town and you could think of it as a forest. And you could, as you walk, just connect together the trees and then realise that the trees are there and there are buildings in between them. So you have a, almost like a gestalt. And you could be thinking of a, of a town as a forest in which people live rather than a forest that happens to be inside a town that people have created. And I think what, what becomes interesting is how does the landscape of an environment that's built demonstrate to people that there are different ways in which we could exist in that space. And so it becomes a cultural question. It becomes the question of in what ways do we um, intelligently um, create the environment around us sympathetically with the natural world that we are part of and ensure that that is very strongly present in the, in the physical environments in such a way as it isn't just managed by us but it's actually in a sense part of us mm -hmm. so much more opportunity perhaps to look at open spaces or buildings that don't just have concrete but have facility in them to grow plants in them opportunities for birds to nest opportunities for people to sort of provide their own growing spaces as you go up the side of a building. All of those things are technically possible. Mm. It's just that our imaginative frame is perhaps limited at the moment to simply thinking that we build one type of building and it's what we live in and then we go to the natural environment mm. to experience that elsewhere. I'm more interested in how we bring the two together mm. and how that landscape and mindscape creates the, 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 the conscious change you like uh, that, that's necessary in us to take us into the next phase of our sort of civilization.